This is quite straightforward in terms of like it's, it's got less pieces in it than the previous one. Um, there's only one thing you can factorize, which is what's it? Yeah, just the numerator, right? So you factorize it like so. That's good. The bottom is just what it is. Okay. So from there, I can read off the vertical asymptote. I can just state it. The vertical asymptote is. Uh, try to be specific. So we've got lots of asymptotes flying around. So it's x equals three. Yeah. X equals three. Good. And then comes this question of, okay, well, what's happening at my edges? What happens as x gets really, really enormous? Okay. Now, in this case, there's an oblique asymptote. And the question is, what is it? Okay. So put your pens down for a moment. Let's stop thinking about the graph for a moment. Let's just think about this guy as a function. Okay. You got x squared minus 1, and um, you're divided by x minus 3. Now, we have spent so much time thinking about these for calculus and thinking about them as graphs that we sometimes forget this is just a division. It's just a division. It's just not numbers you're dividing. It's what are these things called individually? It starts with a P. They're polynomials. So if you're dividing polynomials, then surprise, surprise, maybe it might be useful if I tried polynomial division, right? Whoa, groundbreaking, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide these guys. Now, at the moment, it's not clear why in your mind, but as soon as we finish, I hope you'll see why. Uh, how do I divide these things? I'm, I'm going to write my division symbol. What am I going to write? x squared minus x squared plus 0x mm -hmm. minus... Okay, trap for young be beginners. Just like if you divide a number like 201 by long division, you write 201. You don't write 2 and then 1. It matters that there are none of them there. Okay, what about over here? X this is the divisor. Okay, good. Start me off. <laughs> okay, good. Now remember, at this point, just like in numerical long division, I'm subtracting. Okay? So these guys cancel, and this leaves me with someone else take over. 3x. 3x. Now what? Now what? Plus 3 up here. Yeah, okay, plus 3 up here. Yeah, it's like, where, where am I writing? Okay, You multiply back, which gives you. Okay, now be careful. So many negatives flying around, but you're subtracting here. So eight, minus one, eight, take away, this gives you? Eight. Okay, and then at this point you say, I can't fit any more x's in there, so what does this eight mean? Okay, now, what's the point of doing this? What's the point of polynomial division? Well, what it means is you can restate the original polynomial as this times this plus that. And that's what it means. Okay, so I can rewrite x squared minus one. I don't have to rewrite it like this. I can write it differently. I can also write it as just like you told me, x minus three, x plus three, plus eight. That that's x squared minus one. It's just another way to write it. All divided by x minus three. Now, when you compare this versus this, you're like, why on earth would you write it like this? Can you see why? What am I trying to find? I'm trying to find an oblique asymptote, right? An oblique asymptote. Now, let me try and make it a little more obvious to you. This is two things on the top, divided by the same thing. So I'm going to write them as two separate fractions. Do you agree I can do that? I can just break numerators apart, they're all good. So what happens to the left-hand fraction? Bam, bam, okay? Ah, now, you get this thing, and then you get this thing. Now, remember, Horizontal or oblique asymptotes are all about what happens to x when it gets really, really big positive or really, really big negative. Now tell me what is happening to this thing for those kinds of values. I mean, just have a look at this guy. What's happening to it? This guy here is just vanishing away. Do you notice that? The denominator is getting huge. The numerator is just staying what it is. So this guy might as well not be here. Yeah? So guess what you've got left? There's your oblique asymptote, right? This thing becomes nothing, which is why you approach, you approach because the difference becomes nothing, and then that's your oblique asymptote. Uh, so it's not horizontal, it's oblique. And the reason why is because um, it's all about that degree. Do you notice that, right? If the degrees were the same like in the first question we did, okay, they're gonna grow together, they're gonna grow together. But this time, they don't grow together. Right? This x squared on the top has no counterpart on the bottom. So that's why he takes over. Okay, we're on the home stretch now. Intercepts, help me out. 
<laughs> You've got the x intercepts that you can just read off this numerator, namely x equals one and negative one. I'll just write plus or minus one. Okay with that? Uh, that means I should be able to find a y intercept as well, right? How do I find a y intercept? I'm going to substitute in x equals zero, and in fact, the original unfactorized form makes that easiest. Watch. There it is. That's, that's me doing x equals zero. You see that? All my x terms just disappear. So you've got minus one over minus three, which gives you a third. Okay, I've lined up all my docs. I'm gonna draw some axes now and put some regions on. <laughs> Sometimes you just go with that and that's fine. It's better to learn later. Uh, learn sooner rather than later. Okay, uh, what am I going to put on here? I've got heaps of features to add. I've got a vertical asymptote. So before we continue, is yes. there another way to find the oblique asymptote? Yes. Like, apart from polynomial division? Um, the short answer is yes, however. Um, it's a bit like this. The reason why polynomial division is worthwhile is because it will work every single my fingers. <laughs> Every single time, no matter what kind of combination you have, you can divide through. And admittedly, polynomial division, it's long, right? But it works. Whereas any other technique you've got to find what the oblique asymptote may be, they only work this time or that time or when the degrees are open. So it's like, do I want to learn five different yeah. methods for different? Yeah. So even though it's, you know, this is the reason why, by the way, I, I'm quite happy to advocate using synthetic division because this question is not about division, it's about. The oblique asymptotes. Here's what the synthetic division looks like for this. You'll laugh by how quickly I can do it. There's that. So I just go 1, 3, 3, 9, 8. There we go. What? <laughs> now, you don't know what I just did because you're not familiar with the form. But if you look closely at the numbers, see that 1, 3, and 8? They correspond to 1, 3, and 8. Right? The 1, 0, and negative 1 are 1, 0, and negative 1. Because really, what makes long division so long is you've got to write x squared, then you've got to write x, you've got to write... And you've got to do them so many times over so much space, it just takes you forever. This is doing all the same computation, um, except it just strips out all the unnecessary stuff. Okay? So anyway, I, I can talk about that another time if you like, or you can look up the video on it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> luxury of it, exactly. <laughs> right, I got, I got this asymptote here. Uh, I've got the bleak asymptote, so just watch out for that. Uh, one, two, three, what's it going to look like? This. Okay, this is going to be a bit challenging, but I'll give it a go. Okay. I should label all my asymptotes. So there's y equals x plus 3, there's x equals 3. What else I got here? I got a couple of intercepts. Plus or minus 1. Here and here. And I've also got a y intercept, which is a third. Something like that. Okay. Now, here, instead of, as you saw last time, I mean, it's actually a lot easier for you if you've got a pencil, because you can like shade and your regions can look quite good. Okay. But my regions are kind of just turning into a dog's breakfast. So I just want you to imagine the regions with me. Right. Can you see my three factor lines? Can you imagine them? x minus 1 is going to go through here, x plus 1 is going to go through here, and x minus 3 is, is going to go through here. So 1, 2, 3. Is that okay? Now, think, you actually are going to start down here. You have to, because how many factors are there? Three. three. And they're all negative. They always start off negative. So negative, negative, negative. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to cross over from here to here. I'm going to have two that are still negative and one that's positive. So when you combine them, when you shade your regions, you'll get a positive. And then it switches, and then it switches one last time. Yeah. Does it always switch back and forth? Well, if your factors are linear, like these are, okay, then yes, absolutely. Because every time, a single factor is changing from negative to positive. And then the next single factor is changing from negative to positive, which has that flipping effect. Okay? But sometimes, I mean, I could give you something like this. If I made a denominator of this, okay? um, you can factorize that, right? What, what, what would that um, denominator become? This is sum of cubes. Oops. Same, opposite, positive. Okay. 
Um, now you have a look at this. Now the whole point of sum of cubes is that this gets factorized, but this is stuck. And you can go and do your discriminant on this, and it has no real solutions. So therefore this thing, right? this is one of the factors, but it's not linear, is it? It's a parabola. right? But that's OK, because think, no real roots. What's the leading coefficient? It's 1. That means it's positive definite. So guess what this factor is, this factor here. No matter what number you throw in, it's always going to be positive. positive. So, so what does it contribute to the sign of the whole thing? Answer, it doesn't contribute to anything because it's always a positive number. Does that make sense? So in this case, you should be able to factorize down, but if you can't, you can still work out what to do with that. All right, are you ready? Should we draw this thing? I know I'm going to go negative, positive, negative, which makes sense because look at where my intercepts are. You see that? Like where else is it going to go? Where else is it going to go? All right, what about up here? To the right of this, if you follow, it goes negative, positive, negative, positive. Keep in mind, I've got these two asymptotes to approach. So what do you think is going to happen? I think I'm going to get, yeah, this kind of shape, right? Like you've got to go up to that vertical asymptote. You've got to go off to this oblique oh. asymptote. That's <laughs> it. OK? Um, if you try to do anything else, like you can't, whoa, here we go. if you try and do some graphing down here, you're not going to approach that oblique asymptote that you're supposed to, right? And if you try and go, yeah, it's not going to work. Your signs won't let you. 